embattled former acting managing director of the NDDC testifies before the House of Representatives and several important personalities are being probed for allegedly flouting the COVID-19 guidelines at airports. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, the embattled former acting managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Joy Nune, has testified before the House of Representatives Committee on the NDDC at the ongoing investigative hearing on alleged illegal expenditure and mismanagement by the commission. The governor of River State, Yes Omwike, who prevented the police from taking Nunia away yesterday, had asked the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, to probe the invasion of the former NDDC boss. It was alleged that the invasion was to prevent Nunia from testifying before the panel. Joining us to discuss this is Oladimeji B, a politician. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. How are you? Uh, my lights is... Pleasure to have you join us. Uh, we also have via telephone Chete Olu, a political scientist. A pleasure to have you join us on the program. Good evening, Nigerian. All right. After the drama of yesterday, Nunye has finally testified, though virtually. How revealing was her testimony as promised before the committee uh, to you? I I'll take that question to you, Mr. Olu. Okay, we seem to be having uh, some challenge. Um, let's see, uh, Mr. Oladimeji, are you uh, with us? Yes, I'm here, yeah. Okay, so I'll put that question to you. Um, after all the drama of yesterday, she has finally testified uh, before uh, the committee. How revealing um, was her testimony uh, today? Um, was it, as promised, very revealing? Well, thank you very much. First and foremost, I'd like to say that it's quite unfortunate uh, what our country is going through now. Um, I have never seen anywhere in the world where a um, uh, member of the same party, supposedly, uh, have been issues. What happened to that woman yesterday was totally uncalled for. It's condemnable in its entirety. Uh, a situation, according to information made available, that uh, those who went to for the arrest, for the illegal arrest as it is, or as it was, didn't even have um, the approval of the either Inspector General of Police well, or the Commissioner of Police. Disputed, by the way, that has, been, to, that has been disputed, many, Mr. Oladimeji. Um, the public relations officer in River State has come out to say that the officers actually out um, acted legally. Uh, but we'll come to that part of the conversation. Um, let's look at her testimony uh, today. Uh, was it as revealing as promised? Well, that, uh, to me, um, of course, uh, many, it depends on what size of divide one belongs to. Uh, it's something that we know that is really happening uh, in the APC since they came on board. Um, uh, lots of uh, discordant tunes, lot of uh, crises and issues among the same party members who are supposed to be working for the good of the country and the good of the people of Nigeria. So whatever she's going to say, whatever she said at that, um, at that uh, here public hearing, is, 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 I'm not surprised because we know what has been going on with the APC since they came on board. Lots of issues, lot of corruption issues, lot of uh, uh, things that will blow your mind. And uh, this is not too good for us. So as far right. as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's nothing that is uh, that uh, it's not new. Nigerians, Nigerian, I, I expect, they expecting, they expected what happened. Whatever she was, she, she said. Um, okay. We, Let, we, let's bring we are not Mr. happy about what is happening as Nigerians, and uh, I just hope that this government sits up. Uh, the Let, revelation let's bring she in, made um, let's bring in Mr. There. Olu for a bit, and we'll come back to you, Mr. Oladimeji. Uh, Mr. Olu, can you hear me? Well, I'm Dr. Shete Olu, I guess. Uh, Dr. Shete Olu, thank you very yes. much for joining yes. us. All right, so I want to ask you, Nunye repeated her accusation of fraud against Senator Akpabio and then clarified that a total of 8 billion naira was spent during her administration and that she never collected a penny in bribe from contractors. Um, what's your take to that revelation? Well, well, good evening, Nigerians. I 
the four sisters, I, I, I am I'm disturbed at, at uh, the acquisitions and counter acquisitions of the United Data Commission. It's unfortunate, it's, it's a tragic irony that the NDC that ought to foster development is starting to conduct type of primitive accumulation. But beyond it, whatever uh, the immediate past uh, acting empty steps, you know, it's uh, allegations. And I would, I, would, I would insist that the allegations should be investigated. And it's, it's equally interesting that the presidency has constituted an investigative panel, you know, on the NDBC. Every issue, every money spent must be accounted. And the panel should insist that every aspect of the allegations and counter allegations are diligently investigated. All right, let's go back to uh, you, Mr. Oladimeji. They talk about old taking. Uh, she brought it up again. Uh, this time she stressed, um, um, like she did during her interview with Gotswi Lakbabio, uh, that he mandated her to swear an oath before uh, he could work with her. She says this is a crime that could attract seven years of uh, prison time. Uh, could you explain this to us? Because even before the hearing today, she also swore an oath. See, um, this, these are issues that I'm very sure, these are allegations that, yeah, the woman has put forward. And I know that Aquabio, as a person, we usually have his own side of the story. But let me tell you something. I am not so um, particularly disturbed about this. I'm only, uh, um, I'm only disturbed, I'm only worried about the implication on the Nigerian citizens. See, anything that is void is void. Zero multiplied by one billion is zero, and you can't build something on nothing. I am only particular about the kind of leadership the APC government has given us, and this is the way it has always been since the common board. So my challenge, and sincerely too, is that where two elephants fight, the grass suffers. And that is yeah, but, my own saga. We need to take just so like all the house, allegations Mr. Need to go back and forth. So Mr. It is for them, it is for the investigative panel to look at all the merits and all the things she has put forward. And then um, I'm told that Fabio has been invited. It, it's to be part there on of Monday the process of unraveling of what is going on. Uh, she presented, we're looking at her presentation today. First, I asked you what your thoughts were about the accusation, I mean, her presentation. Was it as revealing, the accusations that she's putting out? Was it as revealing? And then I'm asking about the oath taking because it seems to be an issue. And she is saying uh, that um, she was asked to take an oath. And um, she says it's um, seven years imprisonment for the benefit of our, uh, our viewers this evening. I think I should take that question to uh, Dr. Olu now. What is your perspective on that matter? I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Oladmeji. Well, uh, again, I'm Dr. Shati Olu. My, uh, the, uh, I suppose it is illegal for a public officer to take oath. Uh, and uh, that presupposes that the public officer would not make the taking positions that conflict with, uh, the, with the promise to start the country. But beyond it, you know, the, the, the allegation that she, she was asked to take a hold suggests the level of decadence and degeneration that public governors, you know, as we see that into in Nigeria, it's quite unfortunate, it's tragic. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I had watched and listened to the shenanigans, you know, concerning the NDCC. I'm totally disappointed, and uh, I am amazed at the level of degeneracy, you know, that public service uh, and public governance had crept into in Nigeria. It's quite unfortunate, it is tragic, and uh, it, it is preposterous. Uh, and Nigerians should talk about this, to, to condemn it, and we should insist on what is right and what is appropriate. I suppose that public governance and public service require some levels of morality and public decorum and, and ethics. It is so quite unfortunate that public officers are condescending into indecorous behaviors and conducts. It's quite unfortunate. All right.
uh, let's come back to you, Mr. Oladimiji. The siege that Governor Wike said, you actually alluded to this earlier when you talked about the lack of authorization for the police team that went there. Um, now we know there was an authorization from no less than the IGP team. What worries you about that development? Does it consolidate arguments that powers that be are using the police to intimidate her? Because the statement that the police issued didn't quite outline the purpose of the visit to Nunez's home. Now, let me, let me take it from my little understanding of the whole matter. Uh, I listened to the woman yesterday that she asked for the warrant of arrest. And the people that, the policemen that came couldn't provide any. Now, you see, this is what you go through when you have um, a disjointed or uh, dysfunctional policing system and uh, a disjointed judicial system. On a good day, on a normal day, the expectation has been that when somebody, somebody can be invited, why didn't they invite her? Just like Governor Wicke said yesterday, there are processes to be followed. Why this grandstanding by 4 a.m.? This is illegal. Even if, I'm sure, even if IG has asked them to go and do this, it won't, it wouldn't have told them to go by 4 a.m. The woman has, has, not, has, has not, neither been invited or she has not been involved in any criminal activities that have been known to anybody or the law. So why should they do that? It's illegal, it's unacceptable. So, and that's why I will continue to thank Governor Wicke for his prompt intervention to ensure that that woman was, I mean, the citizen, as a citizen of River State, was protected. And that's one of the duties of a governor. See, my, my, my sister, we have a lot to do in this country. And as long as we continue to, to apply um, uh, illegality in everything we do, we continue to run into this problem. This is the time for us to face more or most of the daunting challenges that are facing us. We are in post COVID-19 and a lot needs to be done. So this government should show some seriousness and some level of decorum. This is not what we need now. This is, is, is a distraction a total distraction. COVID-19 has exposed our weaknesses. It has exposed everything we have as a country that is unprepared. This is a time that we need state men as leaders, people who understand how to create jobs, how to protect people, how to get things right. This is not what we need now. NDDC right. matter is a sorry case. And I am I'm sure that a lot of this will still come we still come out of this, so we wait to see. Is this is one of those um, uh, uh, issues that this government have had? They Hi. claim to be fighting corruption, and look at what is happening now. Just the other day, the minister of labor walked out of the national assembly. Today, uh, yesterday, the current acting MD also did the same thing. We have a problem at hand, and All the right. government under uh, 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 General uh, President Gwari should stand up and act in a manner that will give us confidence. Like, All right, let, let's, keep us let, in confidence every day. This is not what we need. This is not what we want. All right, let, let's go to Dr. Shete Olu. Um, with what the information we have now that the, the, the clearance to go to Nonia's home was authorized by the IGP and the Commissioner of Police in the state, are you still expecting a probe of the siege at her home? Because that's what everybody's describing it as, a siege. Well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm quite dissatisfied with the inconsistency with, 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 with uh, police issuances. You recall that the woman mentioned uh, and the governor of, um, governor of Rivers equally mentioned that the, the, the commissioner of police denied knowledge. But it's quite, quite unfortunate that much later we realized and we found that the the Commissioner of Police and the IG knew about this. But the, the more worrisome issue for me was the manner of entering. We, we saw it on, on camera, and we, we, we actually excited the forceful entry. I suppose the big goal, you know, to, to forcefully enter into private premises the way the police did. She's not a criminal, she's not resisted arrest, and uh, we learned that the police didn't have a warrant of arrest. The, the approach was a guest of life. It, you know, we're not in a banana republic. Nigeria is a democracy predicated on the rule of law. I would expect the police would invite her, uh, you know, for investigation, for questioning, etc., etc. And when she denies, when, when she refuses to honor invitation, there's still processes in law. You know, that I would think 
which in the limits of decency, et cetera, et cetera. I would still insist that the, the presidency should, should, should investigate what happened at the private residence of the media person of, uh, of, 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 uh, of NDC. NDC. It was illegal and it was, it was beyond legal powers of the police to forcefully get into the premises. You know, right. and it was intimidating. And it's, it's suggesting that the police is compromising, you know, when it should be, when it should be neutral, you know, in a serious okay. struggle oh, for power, okay. and it does appear that the police is conniving to do a cover up on likely exposure or some financial misdemeanor in public service. Away from the uh, police uh, situation for just a moment, let's look at what happened at the sitting today. The House Committee, um, after they had a session with uh, Nune, have summoned uh, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gotswila Kwabu, to appear before it um, on Monday. Do you expect that he will do so? Uh, I bring this question to you, uh, Mr. Oladimeji. Um, uh, I think he has no he has no reason not to show up for this. There's a weighty allegation from this woman, and then um, a lot of uh, I'm sure other other stakeholders in the NDDC may uh, might may be invited as well. So I I, I wouldn't I'll, I'll be surprised and I'll be disappointed if uh, Mr. Godwin Lapabio refuses to show up. This is Nigeria. This is not a banana republic. Even though some people are trying to turn it to that. They call us poverty, uh, headquarters of poverty. Now we're epicenter. This is what is, he should go there and clear his name if he has anything at all to say. So I am I'm, I'm hopeful that he will go there and, and uh, state his own matter, state his own case. Because what the, the, the National Assembly has done is it quite in order to give him the opportunity to hear his, I mean, to state his own matter, to defend himself where, wherever he needs to. But the truth of the matter is that as we journey on, a lot of facts, a lot of information will still come to the open. I salute the courage of that woman, and I expect the women fold in Nigeria and indeed Africa to, to, to applaud this woman for doing what he has done. I'm not passing a judgment, but for her to be able to have come out and uh, say the things she know about the happenings, the legality in the NDDC, you know NDDC uh, for, uh, uh, has been- But all of this, um, Mr. Olajimeji, if I might um, interject, all of these are still on the realm of accusation. Um, where yet to, she did a breakdown, of course, of the monies that she spent uh, during her time. But all of these, that we don't seem to, the House, I, I, I'm, maybe I, I might not have that information or be privy to it, but the House has not um, told us that evidence was presented to it on these accusations that were laid on against uh, Mr. Kwabio. So um, is it not still on the ramp before we start congratulating people? Until these accusations are proven, shouldn't we take everything with a pinch of salt? No, we, we cannot because they are so good. Well, we are talking about billions of Naira. We understand. We were told about the budget of ND, NDDC. And like the woman said today, she told us the amount in billions. What she, we need accountability in this country, for God's sake. And that's what Mr. President told us he was coming to do. Accountability, fighting corruption. And now corruption has started uh, staring us in the face from every angle under this government, including the pres under the presidency and the, and the, and the NDDC. More will still be, be, be on. I see a lot of things happening now. Uh, there's, the, 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 there's something that is coming up. And uh, if it's not, if Mr. President did not even stand up to it, it's going to crumble this government. And that is the face of that is beginning to come into the play between the National Assembly and agencies of the executive. It has to be addressed because I said earlier, where two elephants fight, grass suffer. Nigerians have suffered enough. We don't need this distraction. All right. What um, we ask this government is accountability, is probity, is good governance. Let's go back to uh, Dr. Shete Olu. Uh, Senator yeah, Akpabio says he has instructed his lawyers to sue Nunia for defamation, uh, considering that everything so far, like I mentioned, has been allegations that we are yet to see evidence of guilt. What are his chances of winning such a case should he proceed? 
Sorry, would you repeat the question? I had this. Uh, I'm talking about um, Senator Kwabi saying he's going to uh, take Nunia to court uh, for defamation. He has already instructed his lawyers to uh, take up the matter. And I made allusion to what I said just previously, that the allegations are still um, that. That's just that. There is no evidence of guilt as of today that we know. What are his chances if he takes this matter to court? Well, uh... I wouldn't be discussing chances. The, the, point, the first point to make is there's a presumption of innocence on both parties. And these are allegations. And we should also bear in mind that the panel is an investigative panel. It is not a prosecutorial body. You know, I would expect that when the out of rep committee, you know, and the panel constituted by the presidency establishes Prima facie cases, you know, of corrupt practices that it would likely constitute basis to indict either officials, and it could likely constitute basis to prosecute in court. I wouldn't be interested in chances. The bottom line is, I, I would expect that the Azurev and the presidential panel, you know, uh, you know, should do diligent investigation to the matters, and every issue must be investigated and the fact must be exposed. And whoever is indicted, you know, should be arranged in court, you know. All right. Uh, Mr. Ladimiji, so both of you have been, we've been talking for the past uh, 20 minutes or so, we've been talking about, you know, all the distractions around the issue of the NDDC. We've talked about um, the controversies, uh, the allegations of corruption and defamation. How optimistic are you that these will not, in the end, derail the entire purpose of the ongoing investigation? Well, I, I think uh, that will be dependent on the seriousness of this government to do the right thing. Uh, lots of corruption issues uh, everywhere, uh, not just in NDDC. We just we heard about the one in NSITF. They are still there. We're yet to, to see the outcome of that. And so many others. The acting chairman, former acting chairman of EFCC, is going through the same process. So we hope, and it is the hope of Nigerians and my hope, that the government will be serious enough to use this opportunity to correct lots of anomalies in the system. It is my hope that this government will wake up from their slumber and ensure that those who are found culpable are, are dealt with. There are three ways we think you can fight corruption, and they are sacrosanct. Number one is deterrent. Number two is impunity. You fight impunity. Number three is to punish everybody, anybody that is involved. And that's what we expect this government to do. My dear sister, we have a serious issue at hand. This post-COVID-19 calls for serious government, is, 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 it, 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 it calls for a leadership that has lots of vision, that can invest in education, in digital communication, in e-commerce, in intellectual capital, and so many, so many, that has capacity, competence, and everything what you, what you can think of. That is what we need. So I am hopeful, and I am believing that this government will be so serious enough to use the opportunity to deal with, to deal with whoever that is involved in all these matters, and make sure that they are brought to book for the sake of Nigerians. All right. Like I said... Let, let, let's go back to uh, Dr. Shetra Olu for his uh, thoughts on this part of the uh, conversation. Again, I said we've talked about all the controversies, but what we have not actually touched on are the real issues affecting the Niger Delta people. How optimistic are you that all of these developments will not in the end derail uh, the purpose of the ongoing investigation and even the forensic um, audits that we're expecting? No, it should not. It shouldn't. I, I, I do not um, perceive these issues as uh, contradictory. You know, the, the, co the corrupt practices or allegations of corruption and uh, the forensic audit uh, and um, the, the, the aspiration to develop the United Delta are not mutually exclusive. Uh, I suppose they are mutually related. And uh, I expect that when, when that strong investigation, either at the House of Reps and the presidency panel and so on and so forth, should uh, assist the process of, uh, of recreating the United Delta Commission and, and make it less vulnerable to corrupt practices and financial misdemeanor, financial manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, I do not see contradictory relations. What, but my worries are. The, 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 the seemingly laid-back attitude of the presidency. I'm not quite comfortable 
with it. Uh, he has I actually issued a statement. The you... go the whole lot. You know, uh, have you have you, you seen the statement issued by Garba Shew on the matter urging um, cooperation between um, um, investigating agencies and uh, national uh, the House of Representative uh, Committee? Uh, he's also what? talked about uh, making he will see this matter to the end. Is that not some sort of strong reaction enough? Well, do you know what? It's it's quite easy to make statements, and we're quite familiar. With, with similar statements, you know, issued by public officials. But with, beyond it, I, I would expect concrete actions. I, I'll expect, uh, I would also expect discipline yeah. by state officials. How, how do I mean by discipline? I, I'll expect that the, 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 the attempt to reach the policy of corrupt practices or corruption is not selective and is not targeted at political opposition and is not meant to on the mind officials that mean to the that, uh, that appear to be forthright. Beyond uh, it, the presidency is not dealing with the issue of institutional reforms. It does appear that most of the bodies are occupied by individuals who became strong men and who subsequently are undermining the system of private accumulating economic and financial gain. Well I, I still insist that the presidency Given, it's, given the pattern of governance since five years has been laid back and has not been bold and audacious to go the whole law to deal with the political economy of corruption in Nigeria. I have my fears, I have my worries. It's uh, quite easy to make statements, but the presidency should go beyond statements. And take and, some uh, more actions and, uh, that are, you, go you know, beyond statements have been done. And, and All right. uh, you know, Dr. Shetter Odu. You know, to real political actions, to concrete governance, and to dealing with issues of governance and governance crisis in concrete terms. I, I, I'm afraid I do not see that. And All the right, other one we have, please let me make this point. This presidency has been laid back intellectually, and I doubt its intellectual competence to deal with the complex and the multivarious crisis confronting Nigeria's political economy. I have my worries. All right. I have my Dr. worries. Dr. Shete, um, as many Nigerians with lots of worries, thank you. By this government. All right, Dr. Shete Olu, thank you very much uh, for your input on the program tonight. It's appreciated. Thank you. And of course, uh, Mr. B. Oladimeji, um, in 30 seconds, your concluding thoughts, please. Well, well my, I, 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 I have fears too, and I entertain quite a number of fears because Nigeria has the history of um, sweeping high-profile corruption cases under the carpet. I just hope this will not uh, be the same. Uh, it, is, it is for us to get it right. We All have right. some international, reputable international auditing firm that can carry out this job. But the moment to engage our local firm, it's always, it's always ending somehow, and that is my only fear. All right. uh, and again, Thank my you. name is Oladimeji Fabi, and I would like that to be corrected. I'm Oladimeji Fabi, not Oladimeji B. Oh, thank you very much. My apologies. But thank you uh, for your time. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Again, my apologies, please. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, some of our leaders are being probed for flouting COVID-19 guidelines. Shouldn't they be setting examples? We'll be right back.